What's up everyone, it's Speed here, back for the 5 rules of mid. If you're a mid player and you're unsure of why you're not going up in MMR, I'm going to be giving you 5 rules so you can actually understand what you should be focusing on. Because though is a hard game, you can't learn everything at once, so I'm going to give you the basis for mid that actually will help you improve. Halloween is here and Gamely wanted to shock you with a special deal. So for Halloween, we're doing 50% off for the main Game Leap website. Over there, we have more content just like what you're seeing here on YouTube. So you can actually improve at Dota at a much faster rate than everyone else. This is for a limited time, right? No longer than five days will we have this special going on. So if you're consider ever signing up for Game Leap, click the link now. This is the best time to do it because half off is a very, very good deal. So the first rule I want to talk about is very actionable. And what I mean by that is... You can imply this and, and focus on this every single game, and it will by far be the best thing you can learn. Well, there's a couple of reasons. And the rule is the 20 CS by 10 minutes. And what I mean by that is you should have 20 more CS than your opponent by 10 minutes. And it might be like, well, speed, what does this mean? And should I really always just focus on farming? No, but this actually has multiple layers to it. You have to understand that even if you're playing for 20 more CS than your opponent in a bad lane, it means that you're going to have to find ways to outplay them and secure CS. Because the main reason I see mid players just not maximize efficiency or win their lane is they get either too focused on fighting or they just are bad at last hitting. You're just bad at last hitting, guys. I'm not going to lie. If I played most of you in a 1v1, you could call me out on this in the Discord. Let's play some 1v1s, bro. I'm pretty sure I just destroy you solely on the premise of last hitting. And that's it. Just when do you hit the creep? So if you can't be hitting the creep better than your opponent in your bracket, you don't deserve to go up as a mid player. Like, period. I don't even think, like, you don't even have to watch the rest of the video if you don't believe me here. You have to be able to get at least... 10 to 15 to optimally 20 CS higher than your opponent by 10 minutes to really say, yeah, I am a better laner than them because the main premise of laning is CS, specifically lane creeps. If you form like 45 mud golem camps, I'm going to be a little bit sketch on your number. But for the most part, take this into consideration, start applying it now, look in your replays. Am I actually beating my opponents by 20 CS? And you may be like, well, it's fine. I don't care what you say. I, I, at least I beat him by two kills or I solo kill him once per lane. Yes, but if you solo him kill him once per lane, but only have 30 CS by 10 minutes or even less, I see some people, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Next up on the list for number two, we have rotations and this is difficult. Rotations coming from mid is difficult. I see all the time side laners complaining, dude, where's my mid laner? I lost my lane and where's my mid laner? I, I need help. First off, side laners, you're going to ruin their game if you tell them consistently what to do. I just want to make that clear. You can tell your side laner, I need help, my lane is not going well, but complaining and yelling at them is going to grief your game. I'm just putting that out there. Regardless, how do you know when to rotate as a mid laner? This is a very difficult question, but there's a couple things I think you should look at to make the judgment because often it seems just random legitimately random so the first thing i recommend you look for is bounty runes this is the best time for mid laners to gank that you guys aren't optimizing yet because you can almost guarantee that there will be a kill not only that you're securing a bounty rune and you're filling up your bottle if you have one it is legitimately the best time to gank as a mid laner because you know that you are most likely like nine times out of ten you'll get a kill there it is reliable it is effective and it is the best time to gank now what are the other times the second one i really like is based off haste runes if you get a haste rune the gank won't take forever in addition you'll have a high chance of actually catching up to them so you'll get the kill this means you won't miss a lot of creeps mid the enemy mid laner won't take your tower or deal a lot of damage to it and you won't lose a lot of efficiency meaning it's very very reliable and safe and the last time is around farming patterns right and what does this mean well two things if you're farming let's say you're farming on kunkka in the jungle and you're rotating towards top with your farming patterns look at the top lane and be like hey they're diving the tower or hey, they're overextended. They're very far up, which is actually another thing to look for. Is your enemy very far up? But are they diving? Are they in our jungle? Are they even contesting bounty runes? If the answer is yes, walk over, quick kill, back to farming. I just want to make that clear. If you're playing for efficiency on these heroes like Lesh, Kunkka, OD, whatever it is, you cannot just sit in a side lane in the trees for 30 seconds and justify it. Don't try to justify it to me. Coming in at number three is the main tenant for farming that every mid laner needs to put the biggest focus on if you're trying to increase efficiency in terms of jungling and laning. I hear a lot of people, Speed, how do I know when I'm supposed to go to the jungle as a mid laner? Because sometimes I just feel like I'm missing a lot of lane creeps under tower or they're even taking my tower. Well, the simple answer is if you can, if you are allowed to, you should push in the lane and then jungle. It's that simple. 
right? And why do I say if you're allowed to? Well, let's say you're an alchemist and you're level 5 and the co-op is level 6. You shouldn't go to the lane because you dying there would be the only opportunity for her to kill you and make you lose a significant amount of farm. However, in a lot of matchups, especially the lower and lower MMR you get, you don't get contested that hard in lane. Sorry guys, that's the reality. You do not get contested that hard in lane. So the majority of the time you can push out the wave. So what I recommend you do instantly as the creeps meet mid, if you are level 4 or 5 and you're on a hero that can take jungle camps, like Al, like Kunkka, like OD, whatever it is, TA, kill the lane instantly. Stop sitting around if you can't kill your opponent or pressure them hard and it's just a 50-50, start shoving the lane and then killing the nearby camp. As long as you fill in the gap of resources by buying extra selves and buying extra mangoes, you will destroy your opponent simply on CS, levels, and overall net worth coming out of the lane. So really, look at your replay and look at a pro replay. When do they jungle? It is generally a simple answer after they push out the wave and are a high enough level. If you can do that and analyze, hey, what level do I need to be? What level are the pros when they go to the jungle? You will destroy your opponent in net worth. Especially if you can combine that with a 20 CS rule by 10, the games are not even close. It's not even close. You can have 70 when your opponent has 30 by 10. It's not even close. It's not even close. That's all you have to do, guys. Stop overthinking Dota. Stop thinking like, well, here I gotta cast my, my substrike on the rage creep and I'm gonna perfectly aggro the creeps. Like, no, just stop. Fo <laughs> stop. Just focus on the easy stuff for now. Just nuke out the wave and go jungle. That's it. That's it. That's it. Coming into number four, we have counter picking and safe picking. And this applies more and more the higher and higher you go up, but can be used at any bracket to gain a leverage over your opponent. So what do I mean by counter picking slash safe picking? So the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to that is counterpicking. You guys know what counterpicking is. It's simply, okay, I see their hero. I know a good matchup. I want to destroy them in lane because that's the easiest way to gain MMR. So I counterpick them, right? They pick TA, I go for Huskar. They pick Kunkka, I go for Timbersaw. There's a lot of options like this. And if you play a ton of mid, you'll slowly figure these out, right? You'll figure out what works in the game, what works in lane, etc. And this is very useful. It's that simple. If you haven't been thinking about this, you need to start now. If you aren't sure of a lot of counter picking matchups, you can either look it up on Dota buff. They're actually generally good. Or you can just ask me on the Game League Discord or anyone else on there. And this will really help you lane because you want to be able to destroy the laning stage. People ask me, Speed, what should I be looking for in the draft? And the easiest thing I can say that will immediately improve your gameplay is just pick for the lanes. Pick for the lanes. It's much easier when your team's in a good mental attitude to win in the mid game and late game rather than when you're 0-4 coming on the laning stage because you had last pick and decided to pick Brood into a legitimately unplayable matchup. Just stop doing that, okay? first lanes than everything else. So, also, what if you do if you do not have last pick? What if you do not have last pick? Well, you should also know the heroes that don't get countered by a lot of matchups, right? What would that be? What heroes don't get countered by a lot of matchups? Let's talk about a few. First off is Leshrag. The hero naturally does not lose a lot of matchups, right? He does not lose a lot of matchups. And because of that, you can legitimately first face this hero and not care that much about getting counterpicked. And yes, I understand if they pick something like Huskar, it can be hard, but I'm not kidding. I even beat one recently and that's not a flex. That's me telling you, actually it is a flex, flex, but that's me telling you that you can win most matchups as a Leshrac. So learn this hero and you can first face him. Then if you don't have last pick, it's a good pick. It's a very good pick. It's a safe pick. Similar to Kunkka, the hero does not lose a lot of matchups. You can do fine against OD if you've spanned the hero. You can do fine against Timber if you've spanned the hero. And you crush a lot of ranged heroes. It is very, very safe. In addition, both of these heroes simply fit the key role of any Dota game. Why? Because Leshrac and Kunkka both can act as the scaling position one hero, like the, the hero that takes the most farm. They can jungle unbelievably fast and shove waves instantly, which is very reliable for every game. Or they can just play this tempo controller that simply runs around on side lanes, ganking everyone because they're some of the strongest level six spikes in the game. In addition, like they just buy a ton of stats and run over the game in that regard. That is the difference between safe and dangerous picks. Dangerous picks and counter picks can be heroes like Brood, a Tinker counter pick, a Huskar, a Meepo. You should have a couple of those, one or two. And then on the other end, you should have the Leshraks and the Kunkas for when you do not have last. Your hero pool should include those things. And finally, last but not least, is continuous scaling and timings. Now, what do I mean by continuous scalings and timings? It's actually kind of simple. All I'm trying to say to you guys here is do not stop scaling. 
If you are a Pugna, or a DP, or a DK, and you think you should be trying to end the game instantly, I want you to take a step back and realize often that is going to throw you the game. First off, make sure you are scaling. Push in creep waves. It has a million benefits. It gives you vision when you shove it onto the other side of the map. It allows you to pressure towers if you win a fight. It gives you a ton of gold and XP, which is the most important thing. Just the gold and XP alone is fantastic, and it is the most reliable way to pull off ganks as well. You push in a wave, the enemy team responds, you kill them on the wave. I'm telling you guys, you have to make sure you're continuing to scale. I see too many players get caught up on farming. I've seen multiple storm spirits that I've watched that are below 3k, 4k, that have 150 CS at 30 minutes. You can get 150 CS at 18 to 19 minutes. Do you think it's okay if you were 5 and 1 to have half the amount of CS you should have? The answer is 9 times out of 10, no. Why? First off, it's hard to reciprocate that, guys. It's hard to reciprocate 5-0 and o games, 10-0 and o games. It's unlikely to happen. It's a difficult formula for gaining MMR, because in gaining MMR, you have to be the consistent factor. So being the guy who just tries to 10-0 and o outplay everyone is first off very difficult, and second off, it's often just bad. If you don't push in waves and you make ganks, everyone's going to see you coming. And if you fail the gank, first off, you won't even have items going into the gank. But if you fail the gank, you have zero. If you push in a wave and then gank, at least you have like, let's say it's a, it's a point system of four. Then you at least have two points. Don't have zero points. And the second half to this is timing. Similar to safe lane players, you want to know when you're strong. So let's say you're playing OD. When are you strong on OD? Well, one main timing I would say is your Veil timing. After you get your two Null Talismans, Treads, and Veil, which is a generally standard build for OD, you can then be like, hey guys, I'm strong, let's go smoke to a side lane. Or you could just say, yeah, I'm going to go farm towards a side lane. So you take the top triangle, let's say you're playing on Radiant, and you gank the safe lane. That's it. Simple timing, and the fight and the gank will most likely be reliable and a advantageous fight because you're playing around a timing. Don't always be so random. That's why when I was talking about the rotations, I give you three main aspects for rotating because it shouldn't always just be random. You shouldn't be like, yep, here I go. My teammates said they needed me. Here I go. I'm not level six, but here we go. <laughs> And that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you guys have a couple things to think about when it comes to mid lane now, because you, you can't overcomplicate Dota. It's a complex game, but at the same time, there's tenants that you can make simple and patterns you can follow to amplify your gameplay. If you watch the pro scene and really analyze their gameplay, what you realize is, yes, some of the things they do are incredible and random. And in on the spot, their mechanics are fantastic. There is a gajillion reasons why they're where they are. I'm not denying that. But there are a lot of things that are very very much patterns and you can follow them and copy them so thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed please do like and subscribe to help our channel grow i've been having a lot of fun making content for you guys just like this video so if you enjoyed hopefully i'll see you in the next one peace hey guys quick heads up right now we are running a halloween special for the main game leap website you'll see on your screen right now there's a link to it 50% off going on right now so you can get more content from me and other creators who are going to help you better understand Dota. This is a limited time special, you have to understand. We don't do this a lot. You can get a pro subscription for 50% off. That is all the content you could ever want from us. And you're going to improve at Dota much quicker than you usually would at 50% of the cost. So go check it out and click the link right in front of you right now.